it's time for Good Game Spawn Point. I'm Jem. And I'm Rad. Coming up on today's show, we pop on the VR headset and laugh ourselves silly in a review of Floor Plan 2. <laughs> Plus, Gamers in the Wild investigate the physical gamer. The physical gamer enters a trance-like state. Video games can actually give you quite a workout. Oh yeah, especially to your heart rate when you're on the last health bar of a boss fight. Let's start the show! All right, Gem, I've been hearing a lot of wacka whackers and anxious squills coming from your corner of the office. What have you been playing? Well, Red, it would appear I've been sucked back into the pellet chomping shenanigans of Pac-Man 99. If you've ever looked at old school Pac-Man and thought to yourself, this is cool, but it'd be even cooler as a Battle Royale game, then I'd like to have a word with you. Pac-Man 99 is exactly that, an online multiplayer version of the old classic on the Nintendo Switch. Not only do you have to deal with keeping the usual ghosts off your back, but you've also got incoming attacks from other players slowing you down. It's so stressful, but try as I might, I can't put it down. It's always just one more round. I don't think my controller has ever been squished so intensely, and I don't think it ever will again. I wonder what the next classic game to get the online Battle Royale-style treatment will be. Perhaps Frogger 99, or dare I say, Pong 99. A Pong Battle Royale game? Now that sounds interesting. I wonder if my linked alternate space-time entanglement reconstructor button could activate a world in which that already exists. Uh, let's hold off on that one for now, Darren. Uh, we have a show to do, and the last thing we need is another apocalypse situation. I don't know what you could be. Uh huh, okay. Anyway, Rad, what's been going on in the world of gaming news? Well, Gem, we recently heard some new PlayStation announcements, including that Among Us is coming to PS4 and PS5 this year, along with exclusive Ratchet and Clank skin, hat, and pet. Also, Subnautica Below Zero was confirmed for PS4 and PS5 and should be out now. And we saw a whole heap of new gameplay from the upcoming Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, which showed off the neon-drenched setting Nefarious City, as well as new moves, weapons and features, and the swift rift travel. Plus, we got a bit more of an introduction to the new playable Lombax character, Rivet. Ooh, how riveting. It was right there. I also saw the developers of the heartfelt and sometimes heartbreakingly hard platformer Celeste have revealed they're working on a new game. Or rather, they've revealed the vibe of the new game. Yeah, they're calling it a vibe reveal, which is an interesting term. So far, we've just seen a little artwork and music teaser, as well as the title, Earthblade. It's been described as a 2D exploration game with a pixel art style. And the music is by Celeste composer Lena Rain. Fun fact, Lena also created music for the Minecraft Nether update and was one of the composers behind Sackboy A Big Adventure. All right, you two, it's time to reveal the vibe of the rest of the show. <laughs> Expert segue there, Darren. Why, thank you. Jem, have you ever been to an escape room? I Well, Floor Plan 2 is the game for you. I have. is a silly virtual reality game inspired by escape rooms, which are basically rooms that are filled with puzzles that you need to solve in order to, you know, escape. There isn't really an escape element in this, though. I mean, you can leave the rooms whenever you want, so really it's just solving puzzles. There is some story to tie it all together, though. You arrive for your first day of work at Puzzle, a company that solves people's puzzles for them. At least, that's what they said they did. And then you need to find some things for the boss. I mean, yeah, there's not a lot of story. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty short too. Depending on your puzzle solving prowess, you can knock this out in a few hours or a couple more if you want to find all of the cute collectible creatures. But I don't mind a short and sweet VR experience if it's good. And you should always remember that VR is not recommended for younger spawnlings and no one should be playing it for long stretches of time. 
and this certainly has a lot of charm. I love the cartoony, squishy character designs, and there's lots of silly interactivity. I mean, I got to dance with some cool chickens, so that's a bonus point right there. Oh, totally. And I love how you have these floppy, cartoony arms. And the way you store items in your bum bag is great. What did you think of the actual puzzles, though? Yeah, they were a bit of a mixed bag. They mostly followed the classic find an object, then figure out how you're supposed to use the object formula with some twists. And I enjoyed a bunch of them, but some of the solutions were just not at all logical to me. Yeah, instead of having lots of those great aha moments that make me feel like a big brain, I was having more of those oh uh, moments that made me feel more like a big dummy. Thankfully, though, there is a little assistant you can call on to provide hints when you're stuck. And I will freely admit, I was hitting that button a lot. I think part of the problem is the way the majority of puzzles are laid out across these two towers. Each tower has multiple floors that interact with each other in some not super obvious ways. So you can't ever just see everything you need in front of you, which leads you to going back and forth from room to room, wondering what it is you missed. I think the fact that they needed to put a hint button in is because they probably realized that there were a few solutions that people wouldn't get on their own. Yeah, it doesn't do the best job at pointing you towards the next thing you should be looking at either. So every time you get something new, you just have to wander around until you work out what it could be for. For example, I found a pipe in one room, and then when I went to another room, a security guard would block me from going through a metal detector with it. So my brain thinks, OK, well, clearly, I must need to get the pipe in there somehow. And I proceed to spend the next 15 minutes trying to find ways to get in there. But it's not meant to go in there. Well, I know that now, but here's the kicker. As I'm faffing around with trying to get the pipe in there, I went to put it in my bum bag, and it just disappeared. But, surprise, surprise, it magically appeared on the other side of the metal detector. Great, I broke the game. I don't know how I did it, but I thought, well, if it helps me get through this puzzle, I'll take it. Then I spend the next 10 minutes trying to use the pipe on everything I can before I realise it's probably not even meant to be in there. <laughs> Yeah, I actually had a bit of a bug too. There's a puzzle that takes place in just one room and I spent ages. I tried literally everything and I couldn't seem to progress. I was pretty sure I needed this girl's sponge. So I tried tickling, poking, hitting her with fire and using every item I could. But nothing I did would get her to let go of her sponge. Turns out that was what I needed to do, but the game was bugged until I quit and reloaded the save. I just wish I loved the puzzles more, because I do love the vibe of it and what they're going for. I mean, when you beat the game, you get to put little butts on your hands that fart. Mwah, comedy gold. But overall, I found it more frustrating than fun. So I'm giving it two and a half out of five rubber chickens. Yeah, there are some fun, goofy moments and some of the puzzles are really tough. So props to them for that. I just would have liked it better if the solutions were more logical or they were signposted better. So I'm also giving floor plan to two and a half out of five rubber chickens. Here on planet Earth, there are nearly eight billion human beings. Among them walk a special breed who possess a unique and wondrous habit. These are gamers in the wild. While many gamers have been observed to live quiet, sedentary lifestyles, there is one rare gamer with the fascinating inability to stay still. A physical gamer. Undoubtedly the most physically intimidating of all gamers due to their high level of fitness, the physical gamer asserts dominance of the lounge room with ease. With the area cleared of competing gamers and peripherals at the ready, the morning routine can now begin. Or can it? It seems she must contend with the common gamer for precious gaming resources. The hunt is on. The common gamer takes her chances and attempts to flee. But few can escape the clutches of a physical gamer 
especially one so hungry to complete today's Ring Fit adventure. With the common gamer dealt with, she can now begin. Through rigorous training, the physical gamer enters a trance-like state. She lives for the thrill of the burn, only stopping to find water and snacks. that common gamer would like a go. Exercise is often a foreign concept to the common gamer. She struggles as the ring fit trainer demands more and more squats. And now the typically standoffish physical gamer is helping the weaker gamer. Extraordinary! No one knows why some gamers undergo this transformation, but for the physical gamer, a new friend is always welcome in the herd. And so we observed the fascinating, unique and colourful existence of Gamers in the Wild. Okay, you've got Ask SP questions for us and we're gonna do our darndest to bring you some answers. We sure are. I've actually been practicing doing my darndest and my utmost. So let's kick off with our first video and this one comes to us from Annabella. Oh, hi TTSP. I have two questions for you. Number one, what are some good tricks on Animal Crossing New Horizons? And two, when is Splatoon 3 coming out? If you do not answer my questions, I am going to add a thousand more turnips to your account on Animal Crossing New Horizons. Oh, and can Darren do these? Oh, some cat-themed emoticons! <coughs> meow! 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 Me out of this world! Thank you! Bye! Thanks, Annabella. Although your threat of giving us a thousand turnips actually seems like quite a lucrative reward, provided we could sell them before they go rotten, of course. Hmm. Anyway, if you're after some good Animal Crossing tricks, well, we actually made a video on this very topic last year. It includes tips on planting gold to get a money tree, cross-pollinating flowers, how to use fruit consumption to your advantage, and all sorts of other good stuff. You can search that out on our website. As for when Splatoon 3 is coming out, so far all we know is that it's due for release sometime in 2022. So still a while to wait for that one. On to another query now, and this one comes to us in email form from Daisy in Varsity Lakes. Hi GGSP, what is the best way to make friends in my time in Porsche? Also, how do you make a workshop? If you do not answer these questions, I will make Darren explode! Also, Darren, do these. Hmm, is it just me or is it getting warmer in here? Oh, oh, some emoticons. Oh. <clears throat> Learning to code. Oh. <sniffs> Serpentine. Thanks, Daisy. Well, hello, Rat speaking. Rat and Jem, I don't mean to alarm you, but my core temperature appears to be on the rise. <laughs> Quite drastically, actually. I may be on the brink of overheating. Oh, oh no! Uh, maybe Daisy wasn't kidding when she said she could make Darren explode. Oh, we better answer these questions then. Affirmative. Please hurry. Uh, Mariam, where's my emergency liquid nitrogen? <laughs> oh, hang in there, Darren. Well, I knew my hours of Porsche exploring would finally pay off. There are a few really good ways to build up your friendship with other characters. Start out by talking to them regularly, giving them gifts they like. I like it. You're very nice. And completing the builder commissions they post in the Commerce Guild. Then, once you've reached buddy status, you can go out on play dates to places like the Round Table or the Central Plaza. Doing this as often as you can, plus completing their story missions, will guarantee you a sea of friends before too long. Oh, and what about how to make a workshop? 
Well, the workshop is basically your home and the building area that you inherit at the beginning of the game, so you don't really need to make it. However, to upgrade the different parts of it, like your work table or assembly station, you can check out the catalogue at a g Construction in Peach Plaza that shows you how much it will cost and what materials you need. Upgrading becomes super important as you go through the story and need to build bigger and better things. All right, questions answered. We better check in on Darren with his whole heat situation. Hello? Uh, hi, Darren, it's Rad here. Just checking in on your heat situation. Uh, are you OK? Oh, affirmative. Crisis averted. Just a bit of dust build up in my circuits as it happens. I'm back to optimal operating temperature right now. Phew. <laughs> oh, well, that's good to know. You stay cool now. As a cucumber. <laughs> Talk soon. Uh, imagine a cucumber robot, Darren. <laughs> Funny, huh? Yeah. All right, well, I think we have time for one more question, and this one is a video from Leo. Hello, GGSP. I'm Leo, and I have two questions for you. One, is Crash Bandicoot for coming on Nintendo? And two, is Four Guys Ultimate Knockout coming on Nintendo? And can Darren do these? Oh, more emoticons! <clears throat> Kettle time! Checking my watch! Tax return! Thank you, bye. <laughs> Thanks, Leo! To answer your first question, well, yes, indeedy! Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time, has actually already crashed its way onto the Nintendo Switch. It's About Time? Yes, it is the name of the game. As for your question about whether Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout is coming to Nintendo, well, yes to that too. It was originally announced that it would release on Switch around the middle of this year, but we recently heard it will be a bit delayed. So we'll have to keep an eye out on updates there. Well, it appears that's all the time we have for Ask SP this week. If you have a question for us, go here and send it in. And if it's a video that makes it onto the show, you'll score yourself some sweet GGSP goodies. You know, I hope Darren's OK after that whole temperature incident. Ooh, yeah. Maybe we should chip in for some kind of upgraded CPU calling system for his birthday or something? Uh, this might be a weird question, but does Darren have a birthday? You know, we've known him for so many years now, and honestly, I'm not sure. I mean, do robots even have birthdays? Shh, you might hear us. <clears throat> anyway, next week on GGSP, we go on a Pokemon Safari in a review of new Pokemon Snap. <laughs> this is the first Pokemon Snap game in like 20 years. I'm so excited. You've got to catch them all, but on film, in a nice pose and with some fine composition. OK, quite the photographer are you, Darren. Wait, have you even got a camera? Oh, my eyes are cameras. They're recording 24-7. You should see what I've captured over the years. Uh, no way. Well, until next time, may all your games be good ones. Red out. Jim out. Darren out.